What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because if you guys haven't seen it yet, the ban list has just come out and there is one card specifically that when I saw it, this was the deck I thought of right away and that is Skill Drain. Skill Drain came off the ban list and is now at 3. Well, it actually was at 1 before, but now it's at 3. And the first deck I thought about was True Draco. True Draco can abuse this card so hard, so in today's video I'm showing you guys the newest build for True Draco, how to play True Draco post ban list, post February 2022 ban list. I'm super excited for this. This deck is very fun. Your friends are not gonna like you when you play it, but I can definitely say that this deck has a lot more power now that this card is at three. If you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Thank you guys all for watching. Appreciate every single one of you. And if I haven't said it already, we passed 5,000 not too long ago. I just wanna say thank you guys all for being here, being part of the Spangle Squad. 6,000 soon, 10,000 by the end of the year, hopefully, and with that, on to the video. Okay, so I'm super excited. Let's get right into the deck profile. The new ban list literally changed up the game, shook up the game so much, and I feel like True Draco, even though we didn't get Dynamite Knight back, is very viable just because of one card that came off the ban list. Let's get right into it. So we are starting off with one Dynamite Knight, of course. Triple Ignis Heat. Now, Ignis Heat, of course, is really important in the deck, especially with uh, Dynamite Knight being at one. Ignis Heat searches your spell cards, and then you have Triple Majesty Maiden, which is going to search your monsters. Now, you guys can see we're playing a very low monster count, so actually Triple Majesty Maiden is very important because you really want at least one monster at all times in the game, right? Now, a lot of people like to cut Majesty Maiden to two, and for a long time, I like Majesty Maiden to Two. But the thing is with Majesty Maiden at two is kind of like if you draw a bunch of cards but you don't draw at least one monster, you're in a really bad position. You can't, at the end of the day, like you can't win without a monster, right? But if you have one monster, that's really all you need to get going. So that's why I like to max it out on these ones. Again, in the future, maybe if Dynamite Knight comes back, we play more of this, we cut the Majesties. But yeah, this is the ratio that I'm playing. I think it's very good. Then we're playing one diagram, of course, searches anything in the deck. You're playing triple Disciples and triple Heritage. Now, this deck has so much draw power already. So even this desires going to one wasn't actually that bad and the best part about desires going to one is you're never gonna desires into another desires so uh, yeah that's why it's it's fine the heritage makes it really good you can draw really well with this the disciples you can draw cards as well disciples also puts cards back into your deck so it's very consistent with these two of course then for the rest of the true draco engine i'm showing you guys the true draco package and then i'm going to show you guys the rest of it later but for the rest of the true draco stuff we are playing triple true king's return as well as triple true king apocalypse or true draco apocalypse i should say you do want to max out on these now the nice thing about this deck that i will say and that this deck has always had going for it is it's really good going first, but it's also really powerful going second. So the reason I say that is because at the end of the day, if you have a trap and a monster, you can set the trap, tribute over it for your monster, and then the trap effects, they all share the same effect where essentially if they're sent from the field to the graveyard, you can pop a monster your opponent controls. The spell cards let you pop spell and trap cards your opponent controls. So that's really important because going second against back row decks, you always have outs to back row with these. Just you can set one or you can activate one, tribute over it, and then you get rid of a back row. And then with this, you tribute over it, you get rid of a monster. So this deck is always really good going first, of course, because of all the floodgates, but going second because you can break boards really easily. So that's it for the true Draco engine. Of course, we're just maxing out on everything we can max out on. And these are just the important cards, the best cards for the True Draco package. Then one card that really breaks this deck, to be honest with you, is Forbidden Droplet. Now, I understand this card's pretty expensive. If you guys don't have access to this, you guys can play something like Forbidden Chalice. You guys can play Impermanence in the main deck. You guys can, you have, there's a lot of other options that you guys can play for a Droplet. But the reason Droplet specifically in this deck is very, very good, very, very powerful. Droplet can send your spells and your traps from your field to the graveyard. You're going to negate stuff your opponent controls. And then you're also going to get the secondary effect of the traps and the spells where essentially when they're sent to the graveyard, you can either pop a back row with the, the spells or you can pop a monster with the traps. So that's why this is really important because essentially what this does for you is it gives you another form of extra disruption. Droplet already in itself is a disruption, but then Droplet is going to lead you to extra disruption. That's why Droplet in this deck is so, so powerful. But again, I understand it's a very expensive card. If you guys can't have access to it or you guys don't have access to it, don't worry. You guys can play stuff like Crippet and Chalice. You guys can play stuff like infinite impermanence i wouldn't play any more monsters only because again you don't really want to draw into that many monsters so maybe play another trap card you can play torrential tribute here and here as well so yeah if you guys don't have access to droplet don't worry about it you guys can sub it out for other cards but droplet in this deck specifically is very very powerful then one desires again i still don't understand really why konami hit desires to one but uh, they did, so you still got to play the one. Of course, this, you really need a lot of draw power in this deck. So uh, yeah, Desires as well as the spell cards gives you that draw power. 
Then you have one card of demise. Of course, you're playing so many spells and traps. That card of demise is very powerful, very good in this deck. And then triple pot of duality. I always like to play duality at two, but now because desires is only at one, you really want to max out on the duality. So yeah, you are playing triple duality now. Then we are playing the newly off the ban list triple skill drain. Now, obviously, we were always playing this at one when it was at one, but triple skill drain? Not to mention, we also have, I'm going to talk about this now, but we also have triple monarchs erupt. So essentially, we have six skill drains in the deck. My opponent and your opponent is never going to be activating monster effects in this deck. Like six skill drains, as well as all this draw power, like you are going to get into one of them, especially like this card is insane. This card is insane at three, especially in this deck, because if you ever want to turn your own monster effects on, you can always tribute over the skill drain. Now, I don't recommend necessarily doing that because the best way to play this deck, to be honest now, is a bunch of floodgates plus, you know, just sitting on a big monster. Your opponent can't get rid of this monster and you're just going to try to punch them for game. That's really the best way to play this deck. But again, worst case comes to worst, you can like tribute your own skill drain, get your own monster effects back on. So skill drain is very, very powerful. And of course, Monarchs Erupt essentially is a skill drain, but Monarchs Erupt, the only difference is that you have to control no cards in your extra deck, which of course we're not playing an extra deck in this deck, but also you have to control a tribute summonable monster. Now with three skill drain, you don't have to worry about always having that tribute summon of a monster. Now, of course, like I said earlier, you really do want to at least have one monster on your side of the field so that you can actually win games and you can push for damage and stuff. So don't get me wrong, you're still gonna wanna try to get to a monster. But the nice thing with Erupt, or the nice thing with skill, skill Drain that's different from Erupt, I should say, is that Erupt requires you to have that monster. Whereas if I just draw a skill drain, no monsters, and I can't get to a monster, I can still sit on the skill drain. So of course, skill drain is very, very powerful. Monarch Erupted is also very, very powerful, so I gotta play three of then we're playing triple solemn strike solemn strike is good going first but it's also good going second because if you're forced to go second and you set a skill drain or you set a there can be only one which i'm just going to mention now we're playing triple there can only be one of course this card's insane you you don't care if you just sit on one monster again like i said earlier even though these are all worms you really only will need one monster and floodgates and you're going to be winning the game anyways right so again the thing about solemn strike that is that it's really powerful in this deck is that because you can go second in this deck you can set your skill drain set there can only be one sometimes your opponent will already have an established board where if you flip a there can only be one they can just have a negate to stop that there can only be one but solemn strike is really important because if you set a there can be only one or a skill drain with the solemn strike you flip the skill drain you flip the there can only be one you flip the monarchs are up and your opponent's like no i can't have that happen i'm gonna negate it then you solemn strike that monster that's negating it and then essentially now you're breaking the entire board so that's why Solemn Strike is really good going first, but it's also really good going second. So that's it for the main deck. It is a 40 card main deck. I will say this though, usually I don't like to give you guys side decks because side decks are really up to personal preference. It's also really up to whatever your local scene is like. So if your locals likes to have a bunch of back row decks, then you want to play back row hate. If your locals likes to do a lot of combo decks and you want to do a lot of combo hate, right? However, just because the ban list literally just came out yesterday and it's not even effective for the next week, we don't really know exactly what the one is going to be. People don't exactly know what their locals is going to be looking like. So I'm going to show you guys a side deck as well as the fact that I'm not showing you guys an extra deck. So I do want to show you guys something at least. And uh, yeah, so here we're playing triple inspector boarded. Inspector boarded, of course, is such a great floodgate on its own. So you really want to be playing the inspector boarded. This guy's insane. Then triple solemn judgment. This is specifically for when you lose game one and you know you're going to want to go first game two, right? Most of the time you are going to want to go first, but your opponent is also going to know you're playing two Draco. So they're going to be playing back row hate. So for that reason, I like to play solemn judgment just in case you get hit with a lightning storm, you get hit with a harpy's feather duster. Uh, you still want to be playing solemn judgment, of course, so you can stop those and then all your back row can survive and you can still win the game right so some judgment of course really important triple anti-spell now this card is kind of the card that like again this is why i don't like showing you guys a side deck because it really just depends on where the meta goes but at the moment i still think triple anti-spell is going to be very important especially with the brave engine just coming out and the brave engine going to be for sure going to be meta because that deck has not been hit at all of course the brain brave engine is new so that wasn't going to get hit but pk as a whole really got no hits on the ban list you can argue fusion destiny to two sure but that's not really hitting the deck so anti-spell makes it really difficult for them to play because now they're going to have to set all their brave spells they're going to have to set stuff like reinforcements of the army etc etc so that deck has a really hard time playing and on top of that one once they do set all those cards, you guys have all the spell cards in here that you contribute over to get rid of those cards. So your opponent's going to be have a hard time resolving stuff through anti-spell. But again, I don't know if this is going to be in the future still in the side deck. Again, it depends on where the meta shifts. This is just an idea where the meta can go. And this is what I think is really powerful. 
Then we're playing triple infinite impermanence. This is in the side deck, not in the main deck. The reason for that being is again, it's 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 really good against combo decks. But I think with three skill drain, people are gonna start playing back row a lot more. So maybe imperm in the main deck is not as important as it once was. However, don't get me wrong, I still think imperm is a very powerful card. But I think it's better in the side deck now, especially specifically I would say in true Draco and other decks maybe not. But you really want to prioritize your floodgates in this deck, and you really want to prioritize your strike. So it's it's really hard to play the imperm in this deck specifically in the main deck. But the card is really really powerful. And then we are ending it off with the newly unbanned Triple Raigeki. This is kind of insane, though. We have Triple Raigeki now. So the reason I want to play Triple now, you could argue you could play something like Dark Ruler no more. You could play other cards like that. But Raigeki is actually very powerful. Now, you could also argue playing Lightning Storm. I just wanted to show you guys Raigeki just because it came off the ban list. But yeah, you could also play Lightning Storm in here as well. But the thing is about Raigeki that I really like is that, yes, so let's say you're going against a Brave player, right? Or any just combo deck, really. They're going to put up a couple monsters. But now that we have Triple Raigeki, Dark Ruler No More makes it so that you negate all your opponent's monsters. And then you have to get rid of that board. Whereas Raigeki kind of is like, hey, if I draw a double Raigeki, they're most likely going to have a negate for one Raigeki. I'm going to be honest with you, they're probably going to have that negate. So then that's why you have a second. On top of that, if you activate Raigeki, they're probably going to have the out for it. But after you activate the Raigeki, they're going to negate it. They're going to end up wasting that negate. So you're going to go one for one. And then if you have any trap card, plus any of your monsters, you just tribute over it, you pop the monster, you break boards, etc, etc. So Lightning Storm could be here instead of Raigeki, but Raigeki actually is a budget alternative for Lightning Storm, because Lightning Storm is pretty expensive, and you can get pretty cheap copies of Raigeki. So I think this is it for the deck profile, I think it's very good. Again, the side deck can be switched up as the meta builds and forms into itself. You can switch up the side deck, I just really wanted to show you guys how to start thinking about playing your side deck so i hope this side deck gives you a really fun idea but again you guys can experiment and play with it all you want however i do think this main deck is very very powerful 40 cards in the main deck i think it's a very fun deck you should try it out yourselves so that is it for today's deck profile i hope you guys did enjoy again the list is new nobody really knows what the meta is going to look like however we kind of do have an idea just because brave pk is definitely going to be still relevant in today's format pk didn't really get hit at all on the ban list However, like I said, this deck is very, very powerful. I think the main deck is still very, very solid, even without the, the, the rest of the meta and figuring out where the meta is going to go. The only thing that could maybe be tweaked is the side deck. Again, that just all depends on where the meta goes. However, the main deck I think is very powerful. Triple skill drain, insanely, insanely good in this deck. Thank you guys all for watching. Again, if you guys do have any suggestions or any opinions, let me know in the comment section down below. That's how we get better together as a community. Thank you guys all for watching. Appreciate every single one of you. And with that, it's Banco. Sign out. Peace.